In the 1980s, a clever bunch of engineers worked out a new way to transmit voice through radio waves, and the wireless industry, the broadband industry as we know it, was launched. First, we had 2G, which gave us great voice quality and started adding data into the mix. But it was at the turn of the century when we started getting 3G and the potential for much better devices like this original iPhone. 4G, of course, brought much faster data speeds and now we're already on 5G, which is the latest buzzword in the industry. Rob Schutter, you are the group CEO of MTN, the largest network in Africa, and 5G does offer some remarkable new advances that are going to make our lives, our cell phone users lives so much more interesting isn't it this is more evolution than a revolution you know 3g maximum download speed say 42 megabits per second 4g maximum speed 300 yeah effective speeds around 50 this was around two so yeah. a big step up yes when you move into the, the the 5g world again you know maximum speeds one gigabit or even 10 gigabits if you're semi-stationary, so it's 5x. Yeah. Radio spectrum is divided into bands. 4G uses frequencies below 6 gigahertz, but 5G raises the bar by using extremely high frequencies. Higher frequencies are less cluttered, giving them higher capacities for fast-moving data and high-speed networks. On 4G, you could download a movie in six minutes. On 5G, you can download the same movie in three seconds. Yeah. It's still going to take us 90 minutes to watch the movie. <laughs> so, so there will come a point where, where what the technology can do is, is, is quite far ahead of what we really find useful at that point in time. Let's just look at some of the great examples. What is the thing that excites you most about what 5G can do for the, you know, 200 and something million people that use MTN's network? High-speed mobile internet opens up all the power of the internet on an affordable device wherever you are in the country. And that is really going to be you know, fit for purpose for small and medium-sized businesses and consumers in these African markets. So we need to, over the next few years, migrate the technologies also to support what the customers need, 3G to 4G to 5G. But we will have such a collection of handsets across the markets for years to come that the real way to think about these technologies is that they are mutually reinforcing and they are not exclusive. A 4G tower fires in all directions, wasting a lot of energy beaming to locations that aren't requesting data. The 5G signal is much more directional and generally doesn't interfere with another signal. 5G wavelengths are also much shorter, which means antenna can be smaller and therefore more of them can be fitted to a 5G tower. It's building on the basis of everything else that's been built so far and, and making all of that more efficient. Yeah, and this is such, such an important point that the, when we talk about a mobile network, it's not mobile really in any sense of the word because the network's not moving. Yes. Okay? The people with the phones are moving around yes. it. And it is basically a fixed network. It's just that the, the very outer layer, which is what the customer connects to, what we call the access layer, yes. is antennas and the customers moving around. So this is the important thing is that in order to get ready for this movement from voice to 3G to 4G to 5G, actually a lot of the investment is in the fixed part of the network. True. And the key technology there is fiber. So it's a fiber base for a mobile experience. Exactly, and customers will not get the benefit of high-speed 4G or 5G unless you build a deep and very, very fast fiber network at the core. As you've noticed, it's incredibly complex and it's very technical. But strangely enough, every time you upgrade your phone, somehow it always seems to involve a lot of drama. 